Hello and welcome to this episode of Stephen Love Science. I'm your host, Stephen Lang. In today's video, we'll be doing a past AP Biology exam problem dealing with genetics and the use of the chi-square statistical um, analysis. So let's just go ahead and begin with the problem. So the problem reads, in fruit flies, the phenotype for eye color is determined by a certain locus, which is just a position in the genome. Capital E indicates the dominant allele and lowercase e indicates the recessive allele. A cross between a male wild type fruit fly, wild type just meaning manifests the uh, dominant phenotype, and a female white eyed fruit fly, which presumably manifests the recessive phenotype, uh, produced the following offspring. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this data. Um, zero wild type males, 45 wild type females, 55 white eyed males, zero white eyed females, and one brown eyed female. That, Brown-eyed female is a little unusual, maybe some sort of outlier or something. Perhaps we'll return to it, but let's just ignore it for now. So, um, and then there's a second cross where wild-type um, and white-eyed individuals from F1 were crossed to produce these offspring, okay? And part A of the question is asking us to determine the genotypes of the original parents and to explain our reasoning. Okay, the genotypes of the original parents. So, we have... Um, a cross between the original parents are the male wild type fruit fly and the female wild type fruit fly. So let's just draw our little gender symbols here. Here's the male fruit fly. This is dad. And I'm uh, pretty sure that's the right one. And here is mom. Okay, perfect. So before we try to think about this further, we should be thinking because of the information, why are they giving us information about the sex of the flies? I mean, they break it down by sex, and they give us information about um, the sex of the offspring. So right off the bat, we should be thinking that there might, this may be an example of a sex-linked trait. This may be sex-linked. So um, let's go ahead and operate under the, under the assumption that it is sex-linked, and we'll see how we, if we can produce further evidence for that being the case. So for the male... Um, his genotype is going to be XY, as is the case in flies and humans. Not all organisms, however, have this um, sex coding. Okay, dad is XY, and he is a wild-type fruit fly. Now, if this is an X-linked trait, then for the male to be wild-type, he must have a copy of the big E dominant allele, right? Because he only has one copy of the X chromosome. So if he has the big E... He's going to be wild type. If he has a little e, he's going to be um, have the recessive phenotype. Unlike females who have two copies of the X chromosome, which may be either heterozygote, have one copy of the uh, little e, or one copy of the big e, will still be wild type, or homozygote, or two copies of the big e, and still be wild type. So let's go ahead. Female here. The female, it tells us, is white eyed. So that means mom has to have two copies of the recessive allele to manifest the recessive phenotype, unlike the male who only needs one copy of the recessive allele to manifest that phenotype in, uh, X -link, with X-linked traits. So, okay, so we're going ahead, un operating under the assumption that these traits are sex-linked. Um, these are the genotypes that we would have. So let's go ahead and do the cross. And we can make a little Punnett square to support our reasoning. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a Punnett square as well. Get a nice little Punnett square in here. Okay. Alrighty. Here we have Dad can give us a big a X. He can give an X with his capital E allele, his dominant allele, or a Y. And mom can give us only X with little E allele. Okay, so these come together. Let's see the possible uh, offspring that we can produce. All right. Okay. So we have the first one here is a uh, wild type female. Remember, the female in X-linked um, traits needs two copies of that recessive allele. And... Um, the first two are both wild type females, and the second two, it looks like, um, are both going to be white eyed males. They're, both these males are going to possess the recessive uh, phenotype, both of them, because 
they each have one copy of the recessive allele, and that's all it takes with males because they only have two copies, they only have one copy of the X chromosome, right? So, let's see. So this is telling us that operating under the assumption of sex linked, and that's what we're fitting for our, for our model of inheritance here, um, we should have 50% of these, rough, well, 50% roughly should be um, um, wild type females, and 50% should be white eyed males. And let's take a look at that F1 generation. Hmm, looks like about 50% are wild type females and about 50% are white eyed males. So that does support our model of inheritance. It does indeed look to be as if this is um, sex linked for the reasons we've just discussed. And um, it makes sense that we cannot have a single wild type male if this is sex linked. It makes complete sense because in order to have a wild type male, the male needs to inherit a um, dominant allele. The male needs to inherit a big an X with a big E on it from mom because in order to be male, he has to get his Y chromosome from dad because it's dad that determines the sex. Dad's going to give his Y chromosome. That means mom has to give a, um, a X with a big E, but mom cannot do that because she has only two copies of X with little E, right? So that explains why we have zero wild type males, okay? So let's go ahead and answer the next part of the question then. So the next part of the question is asking us to use a chi-square test on the data from the F2 generation to analyze our prediction about parental genotypes. So basically that's saying is, we made an assumption about our parental genotypes, so we assume that they're going to be this genotype, we assume they're going to be X-linked, and that, that um, process, that reasoning, leads us to genotypes for the F1 offspring, right? And it wants us to use that information to um, uh, conduct a chi-square test, right? So, one thing I do like to do that I hadn't done before is to give the genotypes um, that would be responsible for these phenotypes here. So for the wild type male, um, that person, that male is going to be, that fly is going to be X, um, excuse me, X big E, Y. Wild type female can be um, X big E, X big E, or X big E, X little E. White eye male it's going to be X little e y. White eyed female has to be X little e X little e. And I don't know what's going on with this brown eyed female. Let's just ignore it for now. Okay, so it's asking us to uh, look at the data from the F2 generation. So to obtain the F2 um, offspring, uh, the wild type and the white eyed individuals from the F1 generation were crossed. So the genotype of the wild type. And the um, white-eyed individuals are X big E, X little E, and X little E, X Y. So, uh, as they are right here. Okay, so let's go, and I already set up that cross for us here. And if we do our Punnett square, we should obtain the following. Let's go ahead and go through that. Okay, so let's switch colors. Okay, so it looks like our first um, offspring that we can obtain is a wild type female. All right, let's see the next one is a white eyed female that has a recessive phenotype. And then the next one it looks like is a um, wild type male and then a, um, a white eyed male. So it looks like we have a one to one to one to one ratio of the phenotypes that we should observe. So that means that 25% of the offspring should be uh, wild type male, 25% should be wild type females, and so forth for all the possible, for all the four phenotypes that we observe here, right? So that's interesting. Okay, so that's what we should observe. That's what we expect to observe if the uh, assumption, if the claim we made about what we think the parental genotypes is correct. If the claim we made about the uh, parental genotypes is correct, we should observe a one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio um, in the offspring for the F2 generation. And it looks like that's about right. It looks like that's about what we observe, but it, how, how do we prove that? How can we say that 
there's reasonable, there's sufficient evidence to prove our claim. Well, that's why we use statistics. Statistics will allow us to say, yes, we can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that this is what this 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 is the um, this is the hypothesis. This is the model that we can fit, right? So. So in other words, there can be some deviation just from random variation, random chance in the data that we observe with our disease model, with our um, inheritance model still being correct. So the inheritance model of X-linked, of sex X-linked with our um, genotypes we gave for our parents can, can be correct even if we do not observe a perfect one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio, one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one -to -one ratio just because of normal variation, statistical variation, by chance, chance, literally chance variation that occurs. Just like you can say there's a 50-50 chance of getting a heads or tails when you flip a coin, but you can still flip a coin 100 times and get 100 heads. That's extremely unlikely. That's a very low probability that we observe that, but it can still happen. So when we do our statistical test, our chi-square test, we essentially want to ask, um, what is the probability that we would observe this data due to random chance, due to random variation? What was, what's the probability we observe this much variation in our data due to random chance, right? How far away from this data, how far away is the data we observed from the data that we expect under our model? That's essentially what we're asking. So let's go ahead and do our chi-square test then. So in order to test how well our um, inheritance model of X-linked, sex-linked um, uh, explains our data, um, we can conduct, or how, what, how good of a fit it is, we conduct a chi-square test. So we um, co compute the chi-square statistic in this manner, where that's the uh, test statistic chi-squared equals sigma, which means the sum of observed minus expected squared over expected. So here we're talking about the counts, um, not the proportions or anything, but the actual counts, integers, doesn't always have to be integers, but in this case it is integers, of, um, of the phenotypes that we observed, right, in the F2 generation, 23, 31, 22, 24, versus what we expect. And since we expect a one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio, that means that we should have... Um, out of 100 flies, we should have 25, 25, 25, and 25, right? We should have um, a one-fourth oh, one probability for each of them. So here I've just numbered the phenotypes so we can more easily refer to them in, in rows on this table here, which is a good way to construct, um, you know, an easy to follow way to do this chi-square uh, statistic to compute it. So for all of them, we expect... Uh, we should see out of 100, we should see, see 25 of them. So 25 expected for all of these. And here, um, wild type male, we observed 23. Um, wild type female, we observed 31, expected 25. Uh, here we observed 22 for white-eyed male. And lastly, for a white-eyed female, we observed 24, where we expected to observe 25. Okay, so we can go ahead and compute our chi-square chi, chi, chi statistic um, in this manner. So 23 minus 25 squared over 25. And similarly, we do a similar manner for each one of these. And I'm just going to go ahead and compute these. So we then go... So then we go ahead and compute the sum of these observed minus expected squared over expected for all the... Um, four possible uh, categories here. So we go ahead and compute the sum, and that turns out to be about two. Okay, about two. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and interpret the value of our chi-square statistic of two. So the college board in this question provided a little table for us. So we found that our chi-square statistic equals 2.0. And hmm, what's this is notion about degrees of freedom? So here we have different critical values for the chi-square statistic um, looking over here. But then it gives us some stuff about degrees of freedom. So in this problem, we have four different categories. We have 
wild type male, wild type female, white-eyed male, and white-eyed female.